Williamsburg Bridge. We also have a tough ride heading into Queens at the Throgneck Bridge, so the Whitestone Bridge is much better. Now, in Manhattan, we did have an accident cleared away on the south real slow and on Long Island. Watch out for a crash on the eastbound side of the LIE right up Shelter Rock Road. Traffic is sponsored by Plaza Jewish Community Chapel. Traffic and transit every 10 minutes on the lines and breaking traffic alerts whenever they happen. Um, so I'll attend to wins on 93 and now. Plaza Jewish Community Chapel would like to remind you that candle lighting is at 7 o'clock this evening. Good Sabbath and Shabbat Shalom. Now the AccuWeather reporting for Tad here is meteorologist John Ferrick. Some of the clear skies we head in tonight, they didn't choose tonight. It is going to be on the blustery side. We've got some gusts out there right now, doing 40 miles per hour. It's not going to be as gusty once we head past sunset, but it's still going to be uh, rather windy. We're down into the upper 30s tonight, and then tomorrow still breezy, but it'll be nicer. Sunshine makes it with some clouds, we're up to 58. Most of the day's dry. Late tomorrow afternoon, and then tomorrow evening, though, there could be a couple of showers out there. We're down to 45 tomorrow night, and clouds and some sun for Easter Sunday. Up near 60s, more rain moves in here Sunday night to Monday. Monday's high only right around 50. Right now in Central Park, 55 with the sun. Up to 39 tonight in Midtown. Back to the meteorologist John Fear coming up to Weather Station. 10 10 wins on 92 3 FM. Download the free Upside app to earn real cash back every time you buy gas. Use promo code GIF for an extra 25 cents when you use your first fill That's promo code GIF. Sunshine, three thirty-three. If you're hitting the roads this holiday weekend, Connecticut State Police are warning drivers about a string of carjackings or would-be carjackings at rest stops along the I-95. Last Saturday, a rainy day, Christine from New Jersey going into the I-95 Milford rest stop to get some gas. Now as she's starting to pump that gas, a masked man jumps into her front seat. Within seconds, I decide to go into the car to stop them. Um, they went in with the, and you went in like this. You went in the passenger side of the front? Passenger side, front seat, yes. And my screen, he stopped him on the front door. Yeah, yeah. And then he grabbed all my stuff and he ran and got into the getaway car, which was right next to my car. Fortunately, Christine not hurt, obviously very shaken up. Now, the same rest area in Milford, Wednesday, a masked gunman stole a woman's Acura. The very same stop, the same day. A man had to fight off two more attackers to prevent that carjacking. The fourth incident happening at I-95, rest stop in Darien. Glenn Chuck, 10-10 wins, 92-3 FM. Five in our area, accused of taking customers for a ride, have agreed to pay nearly $2 million to settle numerous claims. New York Attorney General Letitia James says the dealerships in Brooklyn, Queens, and Long Island added... Nissan of Queens, Nissan of Staten Island, Barron Nissan on Long Island, Nissan of Westbury on Long Island. Wind Nissan 335. The Biden administration rolled out new pollution rules today. The Environmental Protection Agency's new emission standards will affect everything from freight trucks to buses made starting three years from now. EPA says those trucks and other heavy-duty vehicles create about 25% of the transportation pollution. On top of cutting a billion tons of those gases, EPA estimates it will save Americans $13 billion in health bills, truck operator expenses, and protecting the environment. Correspondent Andy Fields. A popular thrifting site is out with a new report on who's buying what and how. The online consignment platform ThredUp has partnered with the retail analytics firm Global Data to study buying habits. They found that in the U.S., fashion retail grew by 11% last year, seven times faster than the new clothing market. By next year, analysts say one in ten articles of clothing will have been previously owned by someone else. Correspondent Jim Ryan, 56 degrees now, sunny in New York, going down to a chilly 39 degrees tonight. Wind is on 336. A sneak peek at a new Disney Junior series. Ten ten wins and the demon attack.
FDA, don't wait. Treatments are available. Ask a retina specialist about FDA-approved treatments for GA and go to gawon'twait.com. With you time 338 now, 1010 with Entertainment. We're getting our first look at Ariel, the animated musical series for preschoolers on Disney Junior. Hi, was released today, inspired by The Little Mermaid, the series debuts later this year. <laughs> Selena Gomez is debuting a second cooking show on HBO called Selena and Restaurant, which follows her Selena and Chef series. This time she'll join the chefs in their environment. Now in the first series, she had them into her home or over Zoom. During the pandemic, the new series debuts on May 2nd. Godzilla and Kong stomping all over the record books already. Godzilla and Kong, the new empire, raked in $10 million in previews last night, breaking records for legendary Monsterverse. The film is on track to have a monster of a weekend at the box office. Wednesday's time, 3.30. Hi, it's Susan Richard with this message. Need new windows but have no idea what to get and don't want to deal with a contractor? Well, how about one-stop shopping with custom-made windows from Renewal by Anderson? They have this really cool augmented reality tool called a visualizer. They use it during your appointment to show you exactly what your windows and doors will look like both inside and out. And all their windows are built with their exclusive Fibrex material, which is two times stronger than vinyl. During your 31-day sale, save $325 on every window, save $879 on every patio and entry door. Get a free upgrade to their Smart Sun Glass and pay nothing for an entire year. Call Renewal by Anderson before March 31st. 1-800-705-7100. 1-800-705-7100. That's 1-800-705-7100. Tank is not available in all areas. Restrictions and conditions apply. Call for license information. Sorry, Susan. 1010 Wins is now on TuneIn. The news watch never stops.
is dead. He was found in a burning car in Fayetteville, New Jersey. His father has been arrested on arson charges. He could face additional counts. It was difficult for us to process for Leo da Silva and his son. Uh, it's all. It's not yeah, well, we call, um, I'm not sure if he grasped so much the situation. Is he dead? His son goes to school with the boy who was found dead in a burning car. Gasoline near Sayreville High School. The boy's father, Manuel Rivera, who works for the school district, was also there with burns and a self-inflicted wound. Casey Schumer just moved to the neighborhood. I can't see how to watch it on here in the middle of the day. Police were initially called for a domestic dispute where a woman told them Rivera took their son. He's now charged with arson. Matt Rosenberg, 1010 wins on 92.3 FM. Yes, Wednesdays on 343, the wake continues today for NYPD officer Jonathan Diller, who was shot in the line of duty. Governor Hochul is attending today's gathering. Tomorrow, funeral services are being held at St. Rose of Lima Church in Massapequa Park. Diller leaves behind a wife and one-year-old son. Two suspects are facing charges in connection with his murder. Wednesdays on 344. Arrests are made, but police say there may be more suspects after several women say they were attacked on the street in Manhattan. Cassandra was coming up from the 57th Street subway stop, and she is very stressed out about having to worry whether she's going to get punched in the face walking down the street. Uh, I feel like it's one more thing we have to be worried about in the city of women. It's a lot harder when you don't know where it's coming from. It's hard enough to keep on your guard in the subway. in separate incidents, but there are multiple assaults and possibly more suspects. Okay. <laughs> um, keep your wits about you. Head on a swivel. That's Taylor, who says she doesn't look at her phone often. She's more aware, but not terrified. Julia Papa, 1010 wins on 92.3 FM. Seeing the integrity of the Democratic practice was at stake, a federal judge has agreed to block New Jersey's ballot design, which has been criticized for years as boosting the chances of party-backed candidates. U.S. District Judge Zahid Karashi granted a preliminary injunction sought by Democratic Congressman and Senate candidate Andy Kim, along with two other candidates, in a ruling that applies to the June 4th primary. They and others have been pushing for the end of preferential ballot positioning for party favorites called county line ballot design. It's not clear what happens after the primary? For now, Congressman Kim is hailing this as a victory. Wednesday time, 3.45. Hey, Yankee fans, come out to Yankee Stadium on Monday afternoon, April 8th, for the special scheduled first pitch time of 2.05 for a very special day. It's Yankee Solar Eclipse T-shirt day, presented by HubSpot. The first 15,000 yes in attendance will receive a commemorative Yankee Solar Eclipse T-shirt. Again, don't miss the Yankees and Marlins for Yankee Solar Eclipse T-shirt day on Monday afternoon, April the 8th, for the scheduled first pitch time of 2.05. Visit Yankees.com slash tickets today. It's a mystery where Old Spice finds its amazing scent like Himalaya sea salt, but I'm thrilled they have because no other body wash exfoliates and moisturizes 24-7 like Old Spice Gentleman's Himalayan sea salt body wash. Now, if only there was a mountain range separating the Indian subcontinent from the Tibetan plateau where I can hide my Old Spice and keep my family from stealing it, my impossibly smooth skin would finally be safe.
this one year anniversary of Russia's detention of Wall Street Journal reporter Evan Gershkovich, President, B President Biden says his administration continues its efforts to free him. Russia accuses Gershkovich of acting on U.S. orders to collect state secrets, but has given no evidence. Just this week, it extended his detention until at least June 30. They have provided no real justification for holding him. That is because he has done nothing wrong. Say Gershkovich is wrongfully detained. Journalism is not a crime. President Biden echoed this words in a statement today, saying his administration is working every day to secure Gershkovich's freedom. Today's Wall Street Journal front page has a giant blank space with an image of Gershkovich and a headline reading, His story should be here. Sagar Megani, Washington. Which is on 348. Hey,
so some clouds were up to 58. It does look like there could be a couple of showers later tomorrow afternoon into tomorrow evening. We're dry later tomorrow night again down to 45. And then dry for Easter Sunday. Clouds sun high near 60. It looks like we'll see some rain Sunday night. Monday again, the high Monday only right around 50. Right now it's up to park 55 with sun. Call back to 39 tonight in Midtown. Back to other meteorologist John Fear on the U.S. Weather Station. 1010 winds on 923 FM.
Nights is clear, breezy, and chilly tonight, low 39 degrees. Tomorrow morning, sunshine mixing with clouds by afternoon. Could see some showers late in the day, high 58. Few showers tomorrow night, low 42. Should stay dry on Easter Sunday. Clouds to start, then some sunny breaks, high 60. 55 degrees now under a sunny sky in New York. More people get their news from 1010 Winds than from any other radio station in the nation. Angela Laurie is our servicing. Sarah Milano is writing. Kyle McMorrow is at the editor's desk. I'm Lori Metz. All news. All the time. This is 1010 Winds at 92.3 FM. Sunny skies at 4 o'clock. Good afternoon. I'm Lane DeGarty, and here's what's happening. Nine-year-old boy found dead in a gasoline-soaked car in Sayreville, New Jersey. His father has been arrested. Stalking on the subway, a woman in Brooklyn propositioned and followed home by a man making unwanted sexual advances. Five Nissan dealers in the boroughs and Long Island settled charges. They frequently ripped off customers. EPA out with new emission standards for the kind of heavy-duty vehicles that make the asthma problem worse in the city. In the market for a final resting place, a crypt close to Marilyn Monroe and Hugh Hefner is going up for bid. On this Good Friday, no trading on Wall Street, so no closing bill. The mass opening their season at City Field, currently trailing the Brewers by a score of 3-1. I believe they're heading into the ninth inning now. They have one hit of the mess. It's a Sterling Marte home run. The Yankees play tonight in Houston. Hector Weather says mainly clear tonight with a chilly breeze and a low 39. Your holiday weekend outlook is just ahead. Winds News Time 401. First traffic and transit from the Mercedes Benz Medicine.com Traffic Center with two hours. And we are just bumper to bumper westbound side of the Staten Island Expressway in Staten Island right after Crow Road. There is an accident and it takes out the left lane. Here's what you need to know about the bridges and tunnels down to 45 minutes. The both levels of the inbound George outbound also 45. In the Lincoln Tunnel, one hour plus outbound. A really heavy from both 9th and 11th Avenues. Inbound Holland, that's a 40 minute wait. Outbound about 30 minutes. Here's what we see on the Island State Street. The eastbound part of the northern at Lakeville Road. Jam packed with the crash. Eastbound side of the LIE, right around Steering Town Road, you have another accident taking out the right lane. Southern State Parkway, you'll have pockets of volume both ways between the Meadowbrook and the Lawns Office. So a much better ride. Traffic is sponsored by Jack Pocket. Jack Pocket lets you order official state lottery games on your phone. Instead of waiting online, Powerball is now over $935 million. You use code radio for a free ticket. 18 or older gambling problems. New York, call 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text hope Y. New Jersey, call 1-800-GAMBLER. See jackpocket.com slash POS for terms. Up to our next report at 411. 10 wins on 92 3 Top stories in a moment, but with the holiday weekend getting underway, many people have outdoor activities planned. From its games to Easter egg hunts, let's begin with a look at the active weather outlook for meteorologist John Fury. Hey, quite windy out there this afternoon. Gusts up here 40 miles per hour. We're going to see those gusts calm down a little bit as we head into tonight. Uh, Chilly night as we uh, get back into the upper 30s. Still going to be windy and we'll still have a breeze tomorrow, but most of the day tomorrow's frost. Sunshine mixing with some clouds. Uh, we'll top out in the upper 50s and then we'll see a couple of showers later tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow night, but the hot on that. Looks like it should be dry for Easter Sunday. Clouds and sunshine will top out right around 60. Late. Lock it into 10 winds for active weather updates. Around the clock all the weekend long. Tragedy in Sayreville, New Jersey. A nine-year-old boy found dead in a bird. day of the year, every year in his entire life. This is a holiday. He loves it. He can't get enough of it. He's sitting there, he's enjoying it, he's talking about the Mets. And Spike, you know, Mosey's on in here and starts, you know, yelling at him. So he gets defensive. Evan's cool, calm, and collected, but he's human. He got defensive on a great day. He just wants this day to be whimsical. And now he's being threatened, and he's being pretty much Right, and that's, but, but it's, I don't think what I says, it's Evan with baseball. I mean, it's just on another level from anybody ever, in my opinion. So here is Spike trying to, it already rained on the parade yesterday. Now he's trying to rain it on again. He got defensive, and I think there's some pent-up beef between the two of us, if you want my ask. Do you resent your daddy? I know your family doesn't care if you're around at home. Well, that's some of the women, yeah. and we'll play a little bit more of that when we get back from a, from a break at some point here. But yeah, it was uh, it got ugly, and, and Evan called the Spike Nasty names, and it got they talked about family, which, look, you don't really want to go that route, but I'm like, look, you get defensive, and it got heated, it got ugly. 
and that's where we're at right now. It is 4.04. Evan had till 4 o'clock to get back here. He did not get back here. Therefore, and hopefully we hear from Spike soon here, either in a text or an email, or we have a quick Zoom board meeting in the break here. <laughs> but the way it was presented on the air was Evan suspended for a week. Tiki and friends at some point here, so the Tiki Tito Wu show will be coming to you live here on the fan at some point. And we will hear maybe from Evan later. I don't know. I have no idea. I have not heard from him since all this went down. So this is a developing story here on WFAN as the Mets are one hit. And that's the irony of all this, Tiki. Evan went to opening day so he could see, you know, the Mets honor their sous chef and also get one hit. So Evan's going to lose his job. So Yeah, you're right. Good Friday for everybody. All right, guys. If you're ready to pop that big question, discover why five generations have purchased their diamonds from H.L. Gross Jewelers of Garden City. Since 1910, the Gross family has been the place Long Island gets engaged and where you'll find all the latest styles and rings and a huge selection of GIA certified diamonds. Save yourself all the hassle and go to H.L. Gross where you'll get the guaranteed best price as well as the best education and guidance in picking out the perfect ring. H.L. Gross Jewelers, Long Island premier bridal ring store at 840 Franklin Avenue in Garden City or at hlgross.com. All right, more of your calls coming up. Evan versus Spike. Also, we'll break down the Mets home opener here as they're in the top of the night. We'll have a reaction all the way here till 7.30. I got you on the Luke Hour later coming up as well. And then Yankee Baseball Game 2, John and Susan. Remember, keep it locked here on WFN because the Yankee game's on Apple TV tonight. I doubt any of you actually have that. All right, this one is the Sports Minute. It's brought to you by Jack Pocket. Order official state lottery games on your phone.
afraid, to be scared, and they try to frighten you into calling. I'm not here to do that. Tax Relief Advocates is different. TRA is here to tell you that if you owe money to the IRS, whether it's $5,000, $50,000, or $500,000, we have a solution. It doesn't matter if you're sitting in your car, at work, or with your kids. No matter where you are, call now. 800-575-4094. Don't lose hope. TRA can eliminate or reduce what you owe to the IRS. There is zero risk to you. If we can't reduce your tax debt, then you pay nothing. Our passion is taxes and helping individuals fix their IRS problems. We have a five-star rating on Google and an A-plus with the Better Business Bureau. You don't need to be afraid of the IRS any longer. End your tax nightmares today by visiting us online at tra.com or call 800-575-4094. That's 800-575-4094. Tax Relief Advocates. Real solutions for real people. Like we saw 
efficiencies and find another wide receiver, a bigger, not really a blazing target, but you don't really need that because you have Garrett Wilson, but Mike Williams is a really big targeted wide receiver. I think he'll be great with Aaron Rodgers. So you had to do those things, but we know Robert Sala is a defensive guy. Yeah, right? That, I mean, he, he, he earned his stripes in San Francisco. Well, all they did was draft defense, 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 layer on defense. All right, that guy walks, we got someone else that we drafted two years ago, we're fine. And so you could tell he's always wanted defense. And I'm not saying that they were arguing over that, but clearly something moved in the side of Robert Sala because he got one of the really good edge rushers uh, in the NFL in his son, right? Yeah, when I first heard about that story, and I first, because like I said, I was on the air, my first initial reaction to it was, I'm assuming if there was a fight and it got awkward, it was about Zach Wilson. Yeah. Woody Johnson's the only guy on this planet that thinks Zach Wilson can play. And Woody came out this week and said, well, if we don't trade Zach Wilson, by the way, they're never trading Zach Wilson. No one is trading for Zach Wilson. Justin Fields got a, they got a six-round pick. You're not getting squat for Zach Wilson. No. And he goes, we're not going to release him. So we can't quit Zach Wilson. I don't know what the hell they have him doing there. And if he's your third string quarterback with Aaron Rodgers, who's now injury prone and coming off a major injury, and he's not Benjamin Button, he's getting older in the a worse way, and you have Tyrod Taylor who gets hurt a lot, we could be in a scenario where Zach Wilson's playing football games. So my initial thought to you was they were arguing about Zach Wilson. Yeah. Perhaps they were arguing about personnel. Look, I need more defenders. And now here we are a couple days later, and the Jets, and if you're just tuning in, you're coming back to the Mets game. By the way, Mets one hit, 3-1, they lose the home opener opening day here. There is some good news if you're a Jet fan, because they make a massive trade for us on Reddick. Yeah, they do. And, I mean, they are they are so deep now in their edge rushers. Obviously, Jermaine Johnson, who they drafted two years ago. Uh, Michael Clemens was also drafted later round, uh, fourth rounder a couple years ago as well. Will McDonald looked last year. John Franklin Myers is still here. I mean, they're, they're heading now you add Hassan Reddick. They have options uh, on the edge. And I guess that's, that's kind of where football is going these days, and it's really the role that Bryce Huff played last year for the Jets, where he was a situational pass rusher. You can slide someone else inside um, who also had end rushing ability, and you put him on a guard, right? He's not used to the speed or the, the maneuverability of an end rusher. Now he's down with a three technique on a guard, and it just it gives you an advantage if you can scheme it correctly. And so I think that's in Robert's mind why he wants these, these defensive linemen edge rushers so you have versatility on how to attack quarterbacks. You know, you know what football is? Right? Have a, a top end quarterback and have guys that can get after the quarterback. So, huge trade for the Jets uh, getting in Hassan Reddick, uh, who's on the last year of his deal. Um, I mean, yeah, hopefully, if he produces and performs, that you know, the Jets may make this a long term deal for Hassan Reddick. I'm sure that's what he would want. That's the only reason they could trade him. Uh, uh, but now the Jets even feel like they got a little bit of peace of the pie of all the free agent spending or the, the moves that were happening for this Jets offense this offseason. Yeah, and Schefter broke the news and he said it's for a conditional 2026 third round pick. That could be a second. And then he did one of those things. He, you know when you make a mistake and you do a little asterisk? Mm -hmm. He said, if not, it's a 2026 third round pick. So I don't know what the hell he meant by that, but he tweeted that above that. So I don't know what that means, but that's what we're dealing with. And yes, they got, uh, Reddick does not have a contract now with the Jets. If they have a new deal with the Jets and now entering the last year of his contract, if the Jets don't extend him and he leaves in free agency, the Jets would get a compensatory to pick back. So that's where we're at right now. And the Jets, their offseason started out slow. Joe Douglas was taking a nap. He didn't do anything. And it's fast and furious. As you know, Teague, the NFL is not baseball. The free agency is fast. It's furious. Right. A lot of guys get signed quickly. And the Jets basically get squat. Now all of a sudden you wake up and you're like, man, Joe Douglas, the Jets are having a damn good offseason. Aaron Rodgers has decided he doesn't want to be the vice president and he actually wants to be the quarterback. You've added wide receiver. You've had an offensive lineman. Now you get a dog pass rusher here. And you look at this Jets team. Look, you're in a conference with Patrick Mahomes, so it's an uphill battle. But the Jets have to be all in here because Aaron Rodgers at any point can basically be like, you know what, I'm going to go back to Honolulu. I'm going to get the hell out of here. And I'm not going to be a quarterback anymore. Four more years. Yeah, four more years my ass. Who knows how long this guy's going to play for. So you have to build up this roster. And Joe Douglas knows that. And we talk about this with the Giants, with Shane and Dable. Look, the, hot, the seat's got to be hot for Salah and for Douglas. They gotta win. If this doesn't work out here, I know Aaron Rodgers has pumped them up, but if this doesn't work out, they're gonna be gone. Yeah. So they gotta be in a win now type of situation. Uh, Joe Douglas. Yeah, as long as Aaron Rodgers is pumping them up, they're safe. But if Rodgers goes down again and it's Tyron Taylor or heaven forbid Zach Wilson, you know, they're gonna be out of here. Yeah. So they gotta build up this roster. So again, there was this reported, which has now been sort of debunked, fight or argument between Woody Johnson and Robert Salah at the, uh, the owners meetings here this week, but Clearly something is up.
because they go out and they make this massive right. trade. Of, is that no, a fight? No, I don't know. Allegedly? Robert Sala has not said anything uh, uh, regarding this uh, alleged fight. Um, I'm assuming that means he's just not going to comment on it. Uh, but uh, obviously Woody Johnson denied it. Uh, but when you start looking at it, you were mentioning mm -hmm. this offseason for the Jets has turned out to be really good. Now, some of these guys are are kind of in the a, a, you have to prove it stage. Mike Williams, I'm saying he's older, but he's getting a little bit older. Injury prone. And he's been injury prone. Yep. Just a lot of time. Uh, same thing. Same thing. Not, not that he's ancient, he's not old, but by any stretch. Football standards. Football though. standards. He's been hurt a lot. And so he's kind of in a prove it year. Uh, John Simpson and Morgan Moses, I think they're more steady than those other guys. But Terod Taylor, shooting he has to play, it's the same thing. I, he, you got to be healthy. I like Ter Terod Taylor. I think he, he's great for locker rooms, just like he was last year for the Giants. But you got to be healthy when called upon. But the biggest, you know, acquisition, and it's not even an acquisition because he was already on the team, is just Aaron Rodgers being healthy, right? We, yeah. we didn't really, we didn't realize that um, in, in real time because we knew it when we saw the hype in the offseason chronicled on hard knocks, but we got four plays, and then he was down. And so it's kind of like you're getting him off brand new all over again for the year so a lot of moves that the Jets have made and this is even this is pre-draft who knows what they're going to do in a draft and if I mean there's so, so many options if they go tight end they go get Brock Bowers who's their favorite to do right now betting odds they do that it means that they feel like they're ready to win because that he feels like a luxury right if you're gonna if you're drafting high in the draft top 10 ish like like the Jets are and the Giants you got to draft for like longevity get a guy who's going to be here for a while be a staple for us if you draft a tight end at 10 which i don't know the last time a tight end's been drafted is i, I guess it uh, usually doesn't go well right uh, it's, it's tough to take a tight end in the top 10 because unless they're like kelsey or antonio right Reed, but you don't even know but those guys are late we're later i was sort of thinking guys like eric ebron i think uh, out of north carolina might have been in the top 10 there's been guys but it's always always a stretch but when you have aaron Rodgers, you got to get guys around him because outside of reese hall again listen Playmakers. Now they added Mike Williams, who's a playmaker, can right. get down the field, stretch the field, but he's been hurt a lot. If you can get Bowers, who's a beast, a tight end, Georgia, you can get guys around Aaron Rodgers. And it's about, see, they're walking a tight uh, tightrope here because it's about making Aaron happy. Yeah. What you have to do, if you draft, you know, a defensive player, Aaron can be like, you know, I need more weapons. But Robert Sala, on the other hand, take is like, I need defensive players. He's a defensive minded coach. Yeah. And I think that's the balance that Douglas and Woody have to walk here, and maybe sometimes things get heated about the direction of the team. But bottom line is this, the Reddit trade for the Jets here, if you're just tuning in, amazing trade for them, they get a great pass rusher, and now all of a sudden the Jets are having a fantastic offseason, their quarterback decided he wanted to play for the quarterback, not the vice president, and now they're adding all these guys around him, he still have not even gotten to the draft yet, yes. so things are looking really good for the Jets right now. Yeah, they are, by the way, Kyle Pitts, that's what I was thinking of, he was the last tight end to Atlanta, to Atlanta. Yeah. he was the number four pick, but he's not he's just a wide receiver, exactly, he's yeah. not really a wide receiver. Bowers right back by the end, edge of the line of scrimmage. He can do the other stuff as well, but his body physically looks like a tight end, whereas Al Pitts is more of a, a, a big wide receiver. So uh, that's the latest news to just uh, surprising everybody because this one kind of came out of nowhere. Uh, Hassan Reddick getting traded to the Jets for a conditional third rounder could convert to a, a second rounder uh, with playtime and uh, production. He gets 10 sacks or plus. Uh, but we just wrapped up this Mets game as well. As we, if you've been following the show, and if you haven't, go rewind it on the Odyssey app or podcast. And when we're all said and done uh, in Odyssey as well, or wherever you get your podcast, Evan went to opening day. And he went to opening day so that he could watch the Mets get one hit by the Milwaukee Brewers. That one hit happened to be a home run by Starling.
and he will continue working every day to secure his release, as well as that of other Americans detained in Russia. She says he's using Americans as bargaining chips. The court this week extending his pre-trial detention for a fifth time. The first week in New Jersey. Coming up fast west on the 30 bypass, we're going to take a look at that with Irene. I'm Mitch Friggin Dewey. Our pairs are not just for the world. We'll live in Chestnut Hill. We live in Long Island. We'll live in Chestnut Hill. 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 We'll
Philadelphia Sports Fan of the Week series. Hit us up at kywnewsradio.com slash fan. West on the 30 bypass. We'll go up that high read for you. The skies are clear right now. Below 38 tonight. And for your Saturday, increasing clouds. A little rain late in the afternoon. And a high of 59. Tomorrow night is gray shower in the evening. Otherwise, mostly cloudy for your Saturday night. And a low of 45 degrees. Sunday, pleasant for Easter. And the clouds is on high 64. Buy two windows, get two free. Visit windownation.com. Okay, what have you done? Five o'clock.
anticipates rain on Monday, perhaps even a thunderstorm. I'm 52. Rainy weather on Tuesday, again, a chance for thunderstorm to go along with the rain. And Tuesday's side, 49. Michelle? Thanks so much for now. It's 58, getting down to 38 tonight. Major shakeup for politics in New Jersey as a federal judge has granted a preliminary injunction against the county line ballot structure, ruling in favor of Congressman Andy Kim. Here's Kim to view South Jersey reporter by Jordy spoke with a political analyst about what this means. Big, big change in New Jersey politics. Michael Rasmussen from Ryder University says Kim's lawyers argue the ballot bracketing that we see in New Jersey and no other state is unconstitutional. The judge agreed and said the court recognizes the magnitude of the decision. This was fundamentally an unfair ballot advantage, and that's the reason why the judge found that it should go away. Rasmussen says an appeal is likely the next step for county officials looking to keep the current ballot format for the June 4th primary and beyond. So I don't want to handicap, I'm not a lawyer, but I would say there's at least a strong case to be made that this should not go into effect so quickly before the election. And I would expect that to be the matter that gets resolved on appeal probably pretty quickly. In the ruling, the judge said those arguing to keep the line in place don't have legitimate countervailing concerns to be favored over the constitutional rights of Kim and others opposed. If the ruling does hold on appeal, Rasmussen says it'll be interesting to see how lawmakers who were elected with the benefit of the line will craft the system to replace it. At the South Jersey Bureau, Mike Dorn. KYW News Radio, 103.9 FM. A 5.06. A woman in West Philadelphia shot two men inside her apartment. One is dead, the other in stable condition. After around 2 o'clock this morning, near 62nd and Chestnut Street, a woman tells police she came home to find the two men inside her apartment. She got into a fight with them and took out her gun and shot them. Police found a 31-year-old man in a rear bedroom dead with gunshot wounds to the head and torso. Uh, the other, a uh, 32-year-old man, a shot in the chest, but escaped through a back door managed to get himself to the hospital. They say the woman is cooperating with investigators. Authorities are trying to track down a hit and run driver who struck and killed a man off the street in southwest Philadelphia. It was around 10 o'clock last night. Authorities say a 64-year-old man was crossing Grays Ferry Avenue at 30th Street in Grays Ferry. But witnesses say that the charcoal color Dodge Charger ran a red light and hit him, dragging him around 100 feet. Here's Chief Inspector Scott Small. One of the boots that the victim was wearing was on the scene, so our victim was hit with such force that he was knocked out. Uh, one of the Fresh investigators found car parts on the scene, and they believe the charger has damage to the front end. Bizarre case in Louisiana, a woman pretending to be a new mother at a hospital and alleged kidnapping scheme is their dentist. 21-year-old Dynasty Selman faces attempted kidnapping and unauthorized entry to a business charges after police say she worked her way into Our Lady of the Lake Children's Hospital in Baton Rouge multiple times, trying to claim another family's baby as her own. Investigators say she had a parent caregiver badge that was a fraud, was seen on restricted floors, and during one visit was believed to have brought her boyfriend to a patient's room falsely claiming their baby was hers. Now police tracked her down in nearby Rossier City where they arrested her and are back to Baton Rouge for processing authority say the investigation continues.
Station stole a digital memory card out of the trunk of a man who picked up her, let's call it a date. On that memory card, she saw evidence of a far more serious crime, photos and videos of a woman being beaten and strangled. The woman took the evidence to police, who arrested the man for murder. No one feels sympathy for that guy, but don't you need
learn that Jeff was pissed off. So Reese Hoskins ignores him, runs away. Then Big Shot Reese and starts yelling at Jeff McNeil. Yeah, who's that guy? Well, hey, dude, you could have done something. You were right there, too. So my issue with Jeff McNeil is twofold. Number one, if you're that pissed off, fight him. Like, seriously, that's okay. More or less, fight. You may get suspended for five games, but guess what? Zach Torkin.
Eastern workers are said to have fallen into the Satsuko River following that ship crash. Two were rescued right away, uh, while the bodies of two others were found in a pickup truck in the water on Wednesday. The remaining four victims are presumed dead, and recovery efforts are expected to continue once the debris is removed. It's 
advocacy group praised immigrant workers and called for more protections in dangerous situations, work often done by migrants. And Key Brewing in Dundalk, a fundraiser featuring music, is being held right now to raise money for the victims and for workers who are without work at the moment. I'm Bob Costantini, WBAL News Radio 1090 at FM 101.5. WBAL News Now at 6 p.m. in depth. So in the coming weeks, we expect to have a thousand to thousand entries inside of the water. Seven floating cranes, ten tugs, nine barges, eight salvage vessels, and five Coast Guard boats. Governor Westmore and the equipment arriving at the site of the Key Bridge collapse, and noting it will be a prolonged process to clear debris, recover the bodies of the four workers still in the wreckage, reopen hand lanes, and reopen. Baltimore to vessel traffic. Until that happens, cargo that was doomed to go to the port of Baltimore may in fact go to Trade Point Atlantic nearby Sparrows Point, the site of the old Bethlehem Steel Mill. It's where the governor held his news conference, which you heard live on WBAL this afternoon, just after 2.30. Good afternoon. Let me first start by saying again and always, that we're praying for all the victims of the Key Bridge collapse and also their loved ones. We continue to pray for you, and we always will. Continuamos orando por ustedes y los que queremos I also want to thank, again and always, our remarkable first responders and all of our emergency personnel who have been working around the clock in advance of everything today and take care of and leading on our response. And I want to thank everyone who has been part of the response, from the private sector, to the public sector, to the armed forces, to philanthropy, to all parts of society, and all of those who have offered prayers from all over the world. I want to let you know that your prayers have been felt. All who have offered kind words, I want to say that your kind words have been heard. And also, I want to thank Trade Point Atlantic. This horrific human tragedy was also an economic catastrophe. In the early hours, it was Trade Point who said, let us help. The Port of Baltimore is one of the busiest ports in the world, and the collapse of the Key Bridge has shut down vessel traffic to the port. Trade Point Atlantic immediately began mobilizing and accepting some cargo ships from vessels that were bound from the port of Baltimore immediately began preparing for those arrivals and they accepted their first cargo bound for the port just yesterday. We will continue working closely with their team and we are grateful for their support and grateful for their leadership. And that cargo was Volkswagen vehicles. Trade Point Atlantic in Baltimore County houses various warehouses as well, including ones for Amazon. WBL's Kuli Akabuski, House Team, Baltimore County, Actually, I think Sparrows Point is poised to be a big part of the recovery and the resilience here. Uh, you think about a place like Trade Point Atlantic, and there's additional capacity for things like roll on, roll off. We're already actively talking to uh, the leadership over at Trade Point Atlantic about how we maximize all the capacity and throughputs at Trade Point Atlantic. Um, even as we think about long term, we know they're already thinking about building their own port. So I think those conversations, um, you know, even as we deal with the tragedy and, and the humanity of this disaster, uh, but those conversations about the economy in the future are all the more relevant and important. For people who don't know, what kind of what kinds of things come through that area that maybe didn't before but now would because of this situation? You know, I think currently there's a lot of roll on roll off cargo. A lot of automobiles are already going through. We know the Port of Baltimore was already the largest importer of automobiles, I think, in the country, uh, if, if not the largest, one of the largest. And so certainly to the extent Trade Point has additional and Sparrows Point has additional capacity, we want to have that activity continue here. Uh, if there are other types of, uh, you know, bulk materials that can also be uh, transported there, we want to try to keep materials moving through the port, even as we're thinking about issues like clearing the channel and rebuilding the bridge. Um, so we're, we're actively doing all that we can to support the immediacy at uh, Sparrows Point and Trade Point. Uh, we think they may be actively also involved in some of the, uh, the rescue uh, and removal of the bridge from, from the waterway. So, uh, you know, it will play a very active role 
um, certainly in the weeks and months ahead. As it relates to commerce, you know, during COVID, a lot of businesses figured out it was cheaper and better to do things a different way. Are you concerned because the bridge is out you know, the shipping channel got all kinds of issues that that could affect what goes on in Baltimore? We certainly, we're concerned about the impact on workers, on businesses, uh, you know, but we are resilient people. Uh, we have learned that we have to be innovative and flexible. Uh, we just came through a global pandemic and thinking about supports at all levels of government, federal, state, local. How do we make sure that we're putting in those protections for the businesses that are impacted, for the individuals who are impacted, so that we don't see that drop off in our economic output or we don't see that drop off in our local economy? Um, I think we're already seeing, you know, glimmers of hope on that front with the announcement today of the federal recovery dollars that are coming to Maryland. Uh, there's conversation in the General Assembly about emergency legislation to support impacted workers. So there's lots of things that are happening. There are lots of local funds happening, the outpouring of support from local communities. Um, I think we're going we're to do everything we can to make sure we figure this out. It's certainly a concern, but we know we, we can find solutions to that. Are you concerned that the federal money coming from Washington as far as the entire rebuild of the bridge is going to become a political football? I certainly hope it doesn't. I mean, you heard from the governor tonight that he's heard from colleagues, past and present, across this country, irrespective of a party, irrespective of state size. You hear the mayor and I are hearing from mayors and county executives across the country, all parties, small counties, large counties. I mean, the truth of the matter is, uh, but for the grace of God, it could be any of us. And so I think you know, these are the moments where we hope and we expect that, especially our federal leaders, can put partisanship aside and support the president's call to provide the resources necessary to clear the, the waterway and rebuild the bridge. Baltimore County Executive Johnny Olszewski speaking with WBL Phil Yakabuski last night. Today, just after 2 o'clock, the state Senate heard a bill that would help port workers tapping into the state's $2 billion rainy day fund pay up to 23,000 workers. Senate, for, uh, Senate President Bill Ferguson is the sponsor. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. President. Uh, I have a, uh, I'd like to move to suspend the rules for the introduction of a bill uh, and for senators to know this is uh, the bill having to do with Maryland opportunities and regional trade, protecting uh, regional trade, uh, the Maryland Port Bill. Uh, this bill is uh, related to the workers and small businesses and uh, th that are in and around the port. I've worked closely with the senator from District 6 and other members in this chamber. Uh, and I can tell you the 46th district this week has um, been in a very challenging place. Uh, yesterday I had the opportunity to sit with the uh, Admiral of the Coast Guard who is here as part of the Unified Command and the Cruise Terminal with five different federal agencies, state agencies, and federal officials. Um, there's probably 300 individuals who are in the cruise terminal currently. Um, and it was remarkable what they were doing. I mean, truly remarkable how organized and, and, and amazing uh, they, they were working. And as it asked the Admiral several times in several different ways, how long do you think this is going to take? What's it going to look like? What's going to happen? Uh, and, and what he said was he just felt that it would be irresponsible to be able to say. It is one of the most extraordinary situations and complex recovery ende endeavors that he's had to face. And so he, he didn't feel comfortable giving a date. And the sad reality is there are hundreds, if, uh, hundreds of businesses, thousands of individuals who that uncertainty means that they don't know what they're doing with their livelihood. When we had the pandemic, the port was open. This is the first time in anyone's recent memory where the public and private terminal and all of the businesses associated with it are closed. And so, Mr. President, this is to introduce a bill uh, to suspend Rule 32A uh, for the late introduction of a bill. All right. The Senator has moved to suspend Rule 32A for purposes of a late bill introduction. Are there any objections to the Senator's motion? Without objection, the rules have been suspended and the bill has been introduced. The clerk will read the bill. Senate Bill 1188, Senator Ferguson, Maryland Protecting Opportunities and Regional Trade Accords Act. This is an emergency bill. And that emergency bill gets a committee hearing Monday afternoon. Lawmakers are pledging to pass it by the time the legislative session ends a week from Monday night. It's 625. WBAL News Radio 1090 and FM 101.5. Traffic. Still a mess for folks heading north through South Baltimore to the tunnels via I-95, 295, and 895 now that the Key Bridge has been taken out of the question as far as ways to cross the Patapsco River. It's going to require a boatload of patience for you if you drive eastbound on Route 50 right now. The slowing begins around Severn River Bridge and continues all the way to the Bay Bridge. And it's
quick look at 95. It's congested northbound from Callington Avenue to Big Gunpowder Falls. That's due to a disabled vehicle. This report is sponsored by Ashley, America's number one home furniture store. Celebrate and save at Ashley's anniversary sale with hot buys starting at just $4.99. Or shop new looks for less than 0% interest until March 2029 on in-store purchases. Visit homestore.homes for participating locations. Only at Ashley. I'm Mary Ann Perry, WBAL News Radio 1090 and FM 101.5. WBAL TV 11. Weather. Clear skies tonight. Enjoy it because we're going to increase in cloud cover as we move throughout the day tomorrow. Overnight lows are going to fall to the 30s. We'll warm up to the mid-60s by the afternoon. Scattered showers will be expected by the afternoon as well. I'm meteorologist Valencia Jenkins on WVA on this radio tonight in FM 1.5. Right now in Wendy's, kickstart your morning with a new breakfast burrito. With loads of bacon, seasoned potatoes, fresh cracked eggs, and more. It's a complete breakfast in one hand. Only at participating U.S. Wendy's. From taking on extra shifts to the years of hard work, the success you've already had matters at University of Maryland Global Campus because we're a school for real life. And accredited state university, UMGC lets you transfer up to 12 credits toward a master's. Plus, we offer affordable tuition in online and hybrid classes. Gain the credentials and skills top employers are seeking and succeed again. Our MBA and most graduate cybersecurity courses start April 10th. Learn more at umgc.edu. Certified to operate in Virginia by Chef. Prima Talia, Squire, Slater, Slater, Shulman, LLP, attorney advertising is responsible for this ad. Attention, former childhood residents of juvenile detention centers in Maryland. If you were housed at either Charles Hickey School, Backbone Mountain Youth Center, Thomas Waxter Detention Center, Cheltenham Youth Detention Center, or any other juvenile detention center at any time in the past and were a victim of sexual abuse, now is the time to come forward as you may be entitled to substantial financial compensation. Maryland Department of Juvenile Services faced complaints about rampant sexual abuse for decades and failed to protect youth inmates in these facilities. If you were housed in a Maryland youth facility at any time and were subjected to any sexual misconduct from staff members, you may be entitled to substantial cash compensation. Call our Maryland Juvenile Detention Helpline now at 800-731-5145. The deadline to file a claim is close. Call now to get the justice, closure, and the financial settlement you deserve. No matter how many decades ago it was, call our law firm's Juvenile Detention Sexual Abuse Helpline right now at 800-731-5145. 800 731 731 5145. 800 731 5145. WBAL News Radio 1090 FM 101.5 and the WBAL Radio app. When your buddy hits the drive off the seat, directly into your knee. I'm fine. Or when the birthday girl's vinyana swing nails you in the ribs. Ah. You might not be fine. Visit Hello Brave by LifeBridge Health, the fast, simple way to find Maryland's best doctors. Think about it before you walk in and watch it. I'm fine. Just you are not fine. New Jersey, we got a lot of wow to go around all year round. Loop to loop wows. Face to face with a hippo wows. Catch of the day, wow. And catching a wave, wow. It's one wow after another here, any time of year. Find your wow at visitnj.org. New Jersey. Little state, a lot of wow. WBAL News Radio. Listen for news from ABC and from the award-winning WBAL News Team at the top and bottom of every hour. Listen online at WBAL.com, the WBAL mobile app, and on 97.9 HD2. WBAL News Radio 1090, FM 101.5, and the WBAL mobile app. WBAL.com and the WBAL mobile app. Your source for all things WBAL. Stay informed on the latest local news. Check out podcast of your favorite WBAL shows and listen live WBAL News Radio 1090 FM 101.5 and the WBAL mobile app on air and online 97.9 HD2 WBAL.com WBAL News Radio 1090 FM 101.5 and the WBAL mobile app WBAL WIYY HD2 Baltimore all day every day in the 
eastern seaboard has arrived at the collapsed highway bridge in Baltimore. Mentioning the big job, Maryland Governor Wes Moore. This is a remarkably complex operation. And our focus needs to be on unity of command and unity of effort. An initial goal, says the governor, is reopening the ship channel and port to commerce. There has to be more good lower inflation evidence before the nation's central bank cuts interest rates. Says Fed Chairman Jerome Powell, the Commerce Department report today noted prices dropped the past month. More concerned about Pope Francis's health, he skipped the traditional Good Friday procession at Rome's Colosseum, says the Vatican. The pursuit of a stolen car through Hollywood by police came to an abrupt end yesterday as the car, an electric Tesla, ran out of juice in the middle of the road. The driver arrested. This is ABC News. This is WBAL News Now at 6 p.m. with Robert Lang. WBAL News Radio 1090, FM 101.5, and the WBAL Radio app. Good evening, 631. Governor Westmore in Sparrow's Park providing an update on the Sea Bridge disaster. The shipment of cargo bound for the port just yesterday. A load of Volkswagens was delivered to Trade Point Atlantic, which has World Off capabilities and a handful of cargo. During that briefing, the state police superintendent had a warning for drone operators. They're banned around the bridge sites. Here's Colonel Roland Butler. To establish a tactical restriction area begins three miles miles in every direction from the center span of the bridge and goes up 1500 feet we cannot impress upon the public enough please stay away from that area with drones in an atlas just before today her spoke happened in the senate then about 11:88, senator ferguson maryland protecting opportunities and regional trade port act this is an emergency bill. The introduction of that emergency bill to pay as many as 23,000 workers while the Port of Baltimore is closed to vessels. Senate President Bill Ferguson, whose district includes the port, is the sponsor, would tap into the state's $2 billion rainy day fund to not only pay workers, but keep port-related business operating. The same day the governor was speaking, the group Congress of Maryland, which represents immigrants, including those who work in construction and those who died this week, held a news conference calling for safety and safer worker workplaces. We are joined together today for a somber moment of honoring the six brothers who lost their lives during the key bridge collapse this week. Gustavo Torres, executive director of Constitutions for Immigrants, was part of conditions. Leaders from the advocacy group were joined by local clergy and construction workers from around the Baltimore area as they gathered to honor the six men working on the bridge span overnight as it collapsed. Trinice Bishop, WBAL News Radio 1090 and FM 101.5. Before heading to Camp David for the weekend, President Biden told reporters he would come to Baltimore next week to look at the Key Bridge site and meet with officials. Exact date for the visit to be determined. At this hour in Dundalk, at Key Brewing in Dundalk, Key Brewing, along with the Old Eastern Ink Shot, holding a fundraiser with local musicians for the port workers who are impacted by this week's tragedy. We've talked to a lot of bands and other uh, people throughout the community, and everyone is just so willing to support. That's Molly Corman, one of the organizers, and that goes on until 9 o'clock tonight at Key Brewing in Dundalk. And a request has been made to state officials to remember the six victims of the Key Bridge collapse. The company that employed workers who were on the Key Bridge when it collapsed would like them to be remembered. Broader Builders Executive Vice President Jeffrey Pritzker. We have asked the governor that when the new bridge is constructed, that we have a plaque at the entrance, perhaps on both sides of the bridge, which will memorialize the name. Of, of our workers who lost their lives in this bridge collapse. I think it would be a fitting memory and would mean a lot to the families of those.
those who have been lost. A GoFundMe has been set up for the victims' families and can be found on the company's website. Taylor Bennett, WBAL News Radio 1090 and FM 101.5. Coming up, some of the day's other news, including a kidnapping that turns into murder. 6:35 on WBAL News Now at six. WBAL News Radio 1090 and FM 101.5. Traffic. We're going to start in West Baltimore where we have an accident just reported. Edmondson Avenue at Uplands Parkway. Um, you're going to find delays on both routes approaching that intersection. And watch for accident cleanup northbound Washington Boulevard, Route 1, right around Wilson Avenue in Baltimore City. Uh, northbound Route 1 is slow from the Lansdowne Road. And here's some good news. The backup on Route 50 East is getting shorter, but unfortunately still a mess getting to the Bay Bridge. Hang in there, though. Route 50 opens up as you start to cross the Bay Bridge. We're also seeing that St. Margaret's Road is affected between Route 50 and Pleasant Plains Road. I'm Mary Ann Perry, WBAL News Radio 1090 and FM 101.5. WBAL weather. Clear skies tonight. Temperatures fall into 39 degrees. We'll increase in cloud cover as we move throughout the day Saturday, all ahead of our next chance of showers, which will be here by the afternoon. A little more on the scattered side. High temperatures will be making it to a mild 65 degrees. I'm meteorologist Alicia Jenkins on WBAL News Radio 1090 and FM 101.5. It is still kind of breezy in the final hour of daylight for the Baltimore area. The winds are out of the northwest to 29 miles an hour. The sun's setting at 727 tonight, 55 degrees in Baltimore. WBAL News Now at 6 continues. WBAL News Radio 1090 and FM 101.5. 6.37, some of this day's other news. A body that was found in Annapolis is now being investigated as a homicide. Fisher's death in Annapolis is being investigated now as a homicide after a man's body was found in a wooded area Thursday morning. It's the body of 47-year-old David Winchester. Thursday morning, the victim's mother told police that two males forced themselves into our house, demanding money and also claiming they had Winchester. Police were sent to the 900 block of Spa Road, where they found the victim unresponsive. Police said it appears the victim was abducted by unknown subjects in Baltimore on March 28th. That investigation is still ongoing. Gabby DePaula, WBL News Radio 1090 and FM 101.5. And Baltimore police are participating in that investigation. From the Commitment 2024 desk tonight, the State Board of Elections reported today nearly 600,000 voters have already requested mail-in ballots for a primary election on May 14th. It represents, according to the State Board of Elections, the same number of requests for mail-in ballots for the 2022 general election. Now, the Board of Election anticipates the demand for requests to exceed the 2022 general election and for the 2024 presidential primary election to be the highest mail-in ballot election in Maryland history in a non-COVID year. Now, the deadline to request a mail-in ballot to be delivered by mail is Tuesday, May 7th, and delivered by web is Friday, May 10th, the primary May 14th. And if you have requ had requested a mail-in ballot by March 15th, You'll should see it in your mailbox beginning sometime next week. It's coming up on 639 on WBAL News Now at 6. Are you tired of skyrocketing electric bills draining your hard-earned cash? It's time to take control of your energy expenses with American Century Solar. Picture this. Thousands of homeowners across the tri-state area are slashing their taxes and saving big on electricity costs. All thanks to American Century Solar. With federal, state, and local incentives, going solar has never been more rewarding. Thanks to American money on my taxes and enjoying lower electric bills.
to 10 a.m. on WBAL. Hi, this is C4. Now, you've heard me talking about my good friends at Tim Kyle Electric for a long time here at WBAL. Tim Kyle Electric specializes in residential service with upfront pricing. That means transparent pricing with no surprises for you. They outline their work, and that's what you're going to pay for. There are no jobs too small or too large for Tim Kyle Electric, and they're going to offer 100% satisfaction guarantee. There's nothing they can't handle in your home. Their technicians are uniform, they got to pass a drug test, and a background check. So you're going to deal with the top electricians in the state of Maryland. Honest, professional, punctual, and outstanding. All those attributes. They've been voted Carroll County's best electrical contractor time and time again. Don't take my word for it. Check out their incredible reviews. All you have to do is Google Tim Kyle Electric, and you'll see them. People put their trust in them and love their work. Go to T-I-M-K-Y-L-E electric.com. That's Tim Kyle electric.com. You will see why they've been family owned and operated for 35 years and tell them c4 sent you wbal news radio 1090 and fm 101.5 sports it's an off day for the orioles the o's are back in action tomorrow at 405 against the angels the ravens first day of the offseason workout schedule will be april 15th that'll be followed by 10 days of ota starting may 20th followed by a mid-june mandatory mini camp the ncaa tournament sweet 16 round continues tonight I'm Brent Koshal on the home of the Orioles and Ravens, WBAL News Radio 1090 and FM 101.5. WBAL News Radio 1090 and FM 101.5. Traffic. You have a report of an accident on the outer loop at the Jones Falls Expressway exit, but I'll tell you the heaviest volume we're seeing is on the inner loop from Pikesville to the Jones Falls Expressway exit. And hey, it looks a lot better for those of you heading north through South Baltimore towards the tunnel via 895-95 and the BW Parkway, but it is still slower than usual especially northbound on 895 and 95. Some good news, that backup on Route 50 East keeps getting shorter, but I guess that's no comfort for those of you who are still sitting in it. Looks like it's slow now from Cape St. Clair Road to the Bay Bridge. I'm Mary Ann Perry, WBAL News Radio 1090 and FM 101.5. WBAL TV 11. Weather. Well, tonight we'll be under clear skies as temperatures fall to the 30s. Tomorrow, though, we're going to increase in cloud cover all ahead of our next chance of scattered showers, which will be here by the afternoon. High temperatures will be quite mild with temperatures. I'm meteorologist Alicia Jenkins on WBAL News Radio 1090 and FM 101.5. The top stories we're following on WBAL News Now at 6 p.m. One ship that was bound for the blocked port of Baltimore has been offloaded south of the Francis Scott Key Bridge at Disaster Site. It was a load of Volkswagens that could be rolled off at Trade Point Atlantic, the business park at Sparrows Point. That word today from Governor Wes Moore, who met with local, state, and federal officials, even some seeing the wreckage up close before updating the media. Moore noting that even though a crane that can lift as much as a thousand tons has arrived, the interconnected steel trusses and roadways in the water and on top of the ship Dali will need to be cut into pieces before being removed as they total about 4,000 tons. Another six or seven cranes are being called to the scene by the Army Corps of Engineers via the Navy and a host of barges to take debris away is being called to duty. The General Assembly is working on emergency legislation to aid now idled port workers and the victims of the tragedy, six construction workers killed, as many as 23,000 are affected with the expectation what's already on the docks will eventually be moved out. President Biden said today he will be visiting the site at some point next week, but it's unclear when. The head of the Maryland State Police is reminding people the Federal Aviation Administration imposed a no-fly zone for drones with a three-mile radius amid investigations of some private drones hovering around the scene, posing a hazard to salvage efforts. I'm Bob Costantini, WBAL News Radio 1090 and FM 101.5. WBAL News Now at 6 p.m. in depth. Tonight, an anniversary on the minds of many working journalists all over the world. Today marks one year since Russia arrested American journalist Evan Gershkovich of the Wall Street Journal. ABC's Mark Remillard with the story. For the last 365 days, Wall Street Journal reporter Evan Gershkovich has been detained in Russia on espionage charges. The U.S. State Department says Gershkovich has been wrongfully detained. 
His mother, Ella, spoke with ABC News this week. You know that the U.S. government is taking Evan's case very seriously, so we are optimistic. The Wall Street Journal calling his numerous court hearings baseless proceedings and that he should have never been detained. A Russian court recently extending his pretrial detention until at least June 30th. President Biden said today he's committed to getting Gershkovich released. There was a vigil for him last night in Washington. And if you get the Wall Street Journal in print, you'll notice much of the front page was blank today. That's the honor of Gershkovich, the paper says, was next to Gershkovich's work. Arrested for practicing journalism. This week's collapse of the Key Bridge has hit Baltimore hard. Leaves a lot of us reflecting. Tonight, our 98 Rock colleague, Josh Spiegel, reflects. What a week. A roller coaster of emotions that couldn't be further apart. Of course, there was the Key Bridge collapse and the Orioles' home opener, separated by two days. While one event was a catastrophic punch to the gut, the other served as an escape from the sadness. With tragedy comes unity. We rally around the heroes, from police, and the people working to clear the debris from the water. We even rally around the politicians. We look for leadership to guide us when we feel lost. We respect the people we normally might not respect. The week was full of change. Time is a strange thing. Baltimore is nowhere near healed, but the game brought unity to a broken-hearted city, even if it was just for a few hours. This week, there was a changing of the guard, from Angelos to Rubenstein, and with new ownership comes hope and promise and unity. With tragedy comes grief, shock, and also hope for the future. Looking forward to better days. I'm Josh Spiegel. Hear me mornings on 98 Rock. Some perspective now on the Key Bridge disaster on the port of Baltimore from this reporter, Baltimore native, who's been a reporter here at WBAL for nearly 20 years. Like many Baltimoreans of a certain age, I remember when the Key Bridge opened in March of 1977. Not long after it opened, my grandfather, who had owned a drugstore for 25 years in Turner Station and saw the bridge being built, ordered all of us into his Buick Wildcat, and we drove over the Key Bridge. Remember the toll? I think it was $1.25. It was a beautiful day just like today. You could see Fort McHenry and other landmarks from this new bridge. Crystal clear water of the Tapstone. I miss my grandfather who we lost 40 years ago next month. There are other voices that I miss particularly this week. Our friend and colleague, Lake WDL traffic reporter Jim Russ. Now, this is not meant as a criticism of our colleagues in front updated you on traffic this week and every day on WBL. They have done a remarkable job this week. But I can only imagine how Jim would have handled the Tuesday morning tragedy. And another voice missed at the Port of Baltimore is Helen Bentley. The Port of Baltimore was her life, starting with her time as a reporter at the Baltimore Sun and WMAR-TV in the 1940s and 50s and 60s. Then her stint on the Federal Maritime Commission her decades in Congress as a Republican representing parts of Baltimore City and County, and her work for the Port of Baltimore. Governor Bob Ehrlich had the port named after Bentley back in 2006. In 2008, I talked to Helen Bentley about the port and its future. As you look at the port in the summer of 2008, what's the state of the Port of Baltimore in 2008? It's in good shape right now. We just need a lot more land so we can expand more. And we need a 50-foot berth that we can operate. And uh, unfortunately, it takes a lot of money, and money is tight in the state. The port eventually did get its bigger channel, which is now closed to vessels. One could imagine Helen Bentley reacting to this week's disaster. You could hear her voice leading the salvage efforts and getting funding and equipment to remove victims, clean up the Vitasco, and reopen the port of Baltimore. You can also hear her trying to convince her former legislative and congressional colleagues to do that. You can also imagine Helen Bentley speaking the truth, speaking candidly at the daily news conferences from the wreckage and the port, and being bullish on the Port of Baltimore's and Baltimore's future. No doubt she's inspiring the officials responding to this crisis today, both Democrat and Republican. Helen Bentley died in 2014. Her ashes were scattered around the Port of Baltimore. 
Our coverage of the Ski Bridge disaster continues all night and all weekend here on WDAL. We'll have news updates every half hour with detailed coverage tonight at 11 on the simulcast of WDAL TV 11 News at 11 o'clock. We'll get a hear about a musical fundraiser for Port Workers. Tomorrow morning's detailed coverage starts at 5 a.m. with the simulcast of 11 News Saturday morning with Ken Francione and Jimmy Donaldson. Ken Duffy now on the news desk all day at WBL News Radio. Angela Vilas, Brian Kronberger, and Jane Miller will talk about the Key Bridge disaster and its impact plus the Port of Baltimore tomorrow between 7 a.m. and 1 p.m. Jane will hear from City Controller Bill Henry after the news at 11. Orioles discussion tonight after the news at 7 on Orioles Roundup with Nick Testoni on the series of the Angels continues tomorrow afternoon from Camden Yards. The coverage starts after the news at 2, Orioles game day, and the first pitch at 4.05. Sunday morning at 10 and Sunday night at 6 on Commitment 2024 Weekly. We'll talk to the three Democratic candidates for Baltimore City Council President. And Monday morning, C4 and Brian Neiman talk to Montgomery County Executive Mark Elric after the news at 8 o'clock. And a word about this broadcast, now that the Orioles season has begun, we start the time of year where we yield the 6 p.m. hour on WBAL to our friends Brett Hollinger, Jeff Arnold, Melanie Newman, and the rest of the Orioles broadcast team for Orioles baseball. Hopefully most nights until late October. That's when Game 7 of the World Series takes place, and we hope the Orioles are in it. Our thanks to Orioles producers Ryan Leshko and Reese Levin for their work on WBL News Now at 6 during the offseason. We'll be here weekday afternoons updating the news during the Tory Snow program, interrupting it with breaking news events. And on nights when the Orioles play during the day, play late or off or rained out, we'll be here with WBAL News Now at 6. Go O's. 6.52 on WBAL News Now at 6. From ABC News, Tech Trends. The New York International Auto Show opens to the public this weekend where attendees may come across a new electric vehicle brand, Polestar. They share a lot of the same mechanical components with Volvos, but more fashion forward. Craig Cole is a senior editor at EV Pulse. He says the company is marking the North American debut of the Polestar 4. They consider it like a four-door coupe SUV, so scoopier styling, frameless doors like you would have on a coupe, and just real emphasis on design. But the most notable part of that design is what it doesn't have, a rear window. They've done that supposedly uh, to improve the backseat experience. Polestar says cameras do the job instead of mirrors. They replaced the traditional rear view mirror with an HD screen. It's about nine inches and they have a, an HD camera outside the car that looks rearward and that gives you a much wider field of view of what's actually going on behind the vehicle. With Tech Trends, I'm Mike DeBucky, ABC News. WBAL News Radio 1090 and FM 101.5. Traffic. Good evening. We're going to start with a stretch of I 95 between the Beltway and Hartford County. We have a disabled vehicle reportedly blocking the right northbound lane of I 95 right around Big Gunpowder Falls. You can expect slowing to begin right around White Marsh Boulevard. Now, in Anne Arundel County, that backup on Route 50 East um, was getting shorter. Not a fun trip getting to the Bay Bridge. The backup begins right around Baydale Drive, but it looks like it might begin before that because I just received a report of an accident on 50 East at the exit to Baydale Drive. Sorry to be the bearer of bad news. This report is brought to you by Constellation Home. I hope you guys have a great weekend. I'm Mary Ann Perry, WBAL News Radio 1090 and FM 101.5. Need to replace your cooling and heating system? Constellation Home can help. Save up to $3,000 on select cooling and heating systems with 0% financing and a 10-year parts and labor policy available. Visit constellationhome.com. 10605. WBAL TV 11 weather. Clear skies tonight. Enjoy it because we're going to increase in cloud cover as we move throughout the day tomorrow. Overnight lows are going to fall to the 30s. We'll warm up to the mid 60s by the afternoon. Scattered showers will be expected by the afternoon as well. I'm meteorologist Valencia Jenkins on WBAL News Radio 1090 and FM 101.5. Here's a look ahead at some of the stories we'll be following on, on WBAL tomorrow. Uh, all right, Another hang on. Train and yeah. more heavy equipment expected to arrive tomorrow morning at the site of the Key Bridge disaster. Salvage work and the investigation continues tomorrow. So, too, the fundraising for the six men who died and also the port workers who are going to be displaced. That is WBL News Now at 6 for this Friday night at the end of a very busy and memorable and at times heartbreaking week. With Orioles baseball airing this time Monday and Tuesday night, barring rain outs. We're back with you Wednesday night at 6 o'clock. I'm Robert Lang for the men and women of WBL News Radio, 90 o'clock at WBL TV 11. Thank you for your work and your support this weekend. Make it a great
weekend for the Happy Easter. The Daily Briefing with Tori Stone next on WDNL. Now, the Daily Briefing, WDNL, Tori Stone. Thank you, Tori. Thank you, WBAL 